Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, Fritillaria, it's a funny name. They are funny plants or bulbs, and some of them have little quirks to them as well. So what I'd like to say to you is this. If you've got some good soil, you want some unusual-looking bulbs that maybe not everybody grows or has in their gardens, but you should. Now, when I was in Kuchenhof, they would use the giant emperor's crown one in the gardens and they would use them right smack dab in the middle of the tulips or in whatever bed of bulbs and what they were doing is they knew that if those were there every let's say 8 to 12 feet very often the the squirrels wouldn't bother the bulbs so it was a little unusual to see all of a sudden this very different plant in the middle of this group. But it seems to have worked, and they do do it. So let's start with a few of them. Some are fragrant, some are not. So let's just go with the fragrant ones. The first one, let's go with Persica. Persica is called Persian Bells. It's purple. It's good for cut flowers, hardy to zone four. It's 32 inches, and what it is is a tall spike of purple bells which hangs down. And so you've got a spike with all these little purple bells hanging down, and really quite pretty. It's unusual and different, right? And then there is also the, the checkered lily. This is the one you probably see the most. It's known as Melagris, Fritillaria Melagris. It's very good for naturalizing. It is only hardy to zone 3 and 8 inches tall. And what it is, is they're going to be a mixture of Fritillaria flowers that hang down, but the actual color pattern on them is checkered. In other words, just like a checkerboard. Okay. White, purples, pinks, etc. And it is very different and fragrant. Then we go and look at Acomopetala. Now, this one is good for cut flowers. It is a fritillaria. It's hardy to zone four. It's going to be 18 inches tall. It's going to be another small bell flower that has a little bit of spot of purple. Plus, the lips of the petals are also purple, and they hang down in a sort of a creamy light green with the purple on it. So it's an interesting one, and of course fragrant. Very similar in shape is Elwesii. Now, this one is good for naturalizing. It's only hardy to zone 5, but it's 16 inches tall. And think of it as being all purple and hanging down. So it's very like the Echomopetala, but again, slightly different in both height and in color. The Melagris Elba does come as a separate one. Now, this one is known as Guinea Hen Flower. Uh, it's naturalized. It's hardy to zone 3, 8 inches tall. And you'll see that in the checkerboard lily melagris mix, you'll see some white put in there as a contrast. And it is this one as well, and of course, fragrant. One of the most unusual ones, but still, I like the color combination on this one. Think of mahogany. Think of bright yellow lips on the petals of these bells that hang down on a plant that's only 8 inches tall, hardy to zone 4. It's a fritillaria. It's Michaela Koski. And it is really neat. It is in the group of the guinea hen flower, in other words, the melagris, 
but it has the difference in the color and it is of course fragrant. We then get into the big ones, the most common ones. These ones are interesting in the fact that we've got yellow, red, orange, striped. So there is a difference of different ones, but these are all the Emperor's Crowns, okay? The Emperor's Crown all have a large bulb with a hole right down through the middle, and they smell like skunks, okay? Now the bulb does, okay? Not the flower. Now here's the secret to growing this one. Yes, you do need good, rich, moist, well-drained soil to grow fritillarias, particularly this one. But because of the hole down the middle, it's not planted upright like that. It's planted on its side. So that does not allow water to sit in the center and, of course, rot the bulb. So that's what you do. You sort of plant it on its side as when you're planting these. Okay, let's start with uh, Lutea Maxima. This is a yellow, and I mean a good, st good strong yellow with the white stamen, so there's a nice contrast there, which hang down. You're going to see them. And it's good for naturalization. It's going to be up to 36 inches tall, so we're not talking petite here. Hardy to zone 5, and of course, full sun. Then there is uh, Beethoven. Beethoven is a dwarf one. It's still hardy to zone 5, but it's only 24 inches tall. And it's good for naturalizing, but it is more of a lighter orange, almost a pink. And the stems of the flowers are on the mahogany brown-purple tone. So it's quite an interesting one. Vivaldi is another dwarf emperor's crown to 24 inches, hardy to zone 5. It's a little more red, or a very, how about rosy, pinky red. You're going to see the white stamens hanging down. Uh, it's good for naturalizing, hardy to zone 5, and 24 inches tall. Then there's striped beauty. This one is probably one of the most popular, but it's also sometimes one of the harder ones to get in the Emperor's Crown. Stripe Beauty is good for naturalization. It is hardy to zone 5, 36 inches tall. Think of it as a yellowy-orange with red veining stripes. No, Red veins, how's that? Running top to bottom on every petal, and there's lots of them. Consequently, this fragrant fritillaria is known as striped beauty, and it is beautiful. There is rubra, which is the fritillaria imperalis rubra, and it is an emperor's crown. Great. This is probably one of the most popular but also one of the more common ones good for naturalization uh, hardy to zone 5 36 inches tall and fragrant so very very different very good color range difference in height and hardiness and a very interesting bulbs now if you can get these planted they do like the warm soil so get them planted as soon as possible. Let's go into another group, and these have an unusual bulb. This one sometimes is a little more flattened in the bulb. These are anemones. Uh, these anemones are basically, they look like daisies on the most part, but they are compact small plants that fit very nicely towards the front of a border of a plant. They do require drainage. They do require really good soil, full sun to partial shade, okay? 
Let's start with the blue star. This anemone is an anemone blanda, which is the more daisy with the yellow center shape, okay? Also known as windflower, good for naturalizing. Hardy to zone 5, and it's 6 inches tall. So, again, towards the front of the border. White splendor is the same thing, almost identical, except for the color being white with that little bit of a light yellow center. And then there's the Grecian mix. Now, the Grecian mix is a mixture of blandas on the lavender purple, white, rosy red, more toward, and also towards some pink. So you get a mixture. If you like mixtures, then that one is the one to go with. There is also bicolor. Now, this one is in the group of decana. Now, this is an enemy decana. It's still windflower, good for cutting. It's going to be 10 inches tall, so it's a little taller. Hardy to zone 5. This one is even prettier. Think of a creamy pink with a rosy red circle or eye with a very dark sort of center, almost to the dark red, purple, black, okay? Um, Hardy to zone 5, 10 inches tall, very different, very, very distinctive. Another decana uh, anemone is blue poppy. This one is great for cut flowers. It's a windflower. Hardy to zone 5, 10 inches tall, and it is a bluey purple color, more towards the blue than the purple. So it's not too dark that you would call it more towards a black. This one is very distinctive in the fact that it brings blue to your garden. And then there's sylphide. Now, sylphide is an excellent one in the fact that it is more of a dark rosy red with the dark eye in the center. Um, Hardy to zone 5, 10 inches tall, pretty. One of the most common and most popular of the decana anemones is the bride. Uh, the bride is white. It's got a center that is almost green more than yellow. And it's a semi-double. So that means it... You still see the center, but it's got twice as many petals. Cool. There is also the double mix, which is the anemone St. Bridget. Now, this is a double windflower, which means it's a little bit more towards what you would think of as a chrysanthemum, a composite flower, in other words. Hardy to zone 5, 10 inches tall, comes as a mix, reds, Purples, lavenders, pinks, white, all doubles. And then there's gem mix. Now, gem mix is interesting in that it is great for cut flowers. It's 10 inches tall, hardy to zone 5, but it has more of the darker purples, reds, whites in there, as well as the nice medium Pinky, rosy red, all with a dark eye. The purples have a tendency to have a dark eye with a little bit of green in them, but uh, this one is the most interesting. There is one other that is not a an enemy. It is a winter aconite, and I like to put winter aconite into a garden. But it has to be in a spot that is, well, basically sunny, rich, well-drained soil. It's only four inches tall. You have to make sure you don't weed this out. The little balls, okay, of the winter aconite, and that's what they do. They look like little rabbit turds. And this oranthus, or winter aconite, is bright yellow buttercups. 
Now, why do I like this one so much? Okay, it's only Hardy to Zone 5. It's only 4 inches tall. It's got great color. It's got some fragrance. I can't smell the fragrance, okay? But that's me, not the flower. This is probably the first one to flower in your garden. I find that this one will often flower with or before even snowdrops. So this is why I like it. But it's got to be put in a spot where you can see it. And maybe see it from the inside. Because it will peek up through the snow and give you this yellow. If you get a late snow, you will find that this is the harbinger truly of spring. Now I mentioned snowdrops. So I should tell you a little bit about snowdrops. Always plant twice as many snowdrops as you think. There are the doubles, which is floral pleno. And they're only four inches tall, hardy to zone three. So we're looking at great things. Elysii is probably one of the larger ones. It's still four inches in height, but it is the one with that little green tip on it, right? You always see it on that one petal. And it is really early. But one of the best is one is still going to be the snowdrops for naturalization or no now why. Ten inches tall, so you're gonna see it. And hardy to zone three. So there you go. Things to give you bulbs as harbingers of spring but also some very unusual plants to give great interest in your garden, often later on in the season as well. I'm Bruce Zimmerman. This is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.